Now, all of this that's going to get on the pet trainer will not soak through it. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to, oh, look at all that rust. That right there is why our piston was being a stinker and not wanting to go in. This right here warrants replacing the caliper because there's no way I'm going to be able to clean this up enough to keep it from leaking during normal use. can see all of that rust and crud down in there. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you guys, I was hoping I was going to be able to turn this into a how to stop your caliper from leaking video. But in this case, there's so much rust inside this thing. I can clean this out and we can always put a new piston in it. You can get a rebuild kit for these. It'll give you the new washer, but I can't get this boot out without destroying it. So I'm not going to bother trying. This piston, while I might be able to smooth this up, it'll never be able to provide a good seal again. So we're going to put this back in um, and go get a new caliper. Calipers ready to go back. That one wasn't too stuck. That one wasn't too stuck. Okay, that one moves. That one moves. Not at all uncommon to find these that don't move at all. And my suggestion when you find one that does not move, lift this boot right here. You squeeze it off to one side, separate it. Get some penetrating oil down inside, soak it, let it sit for at least an hour or so, and then try moving this, for, hit it inward and then out, and try to work it back and forth. With almost all of these, you have at least one side that has a rubber sleeve on it. Just for that reason, don't pull them both out at the same time. You don't want to mix them up. Generally, it will be, the one with the rubber will be on the trailing edge. In this case, the car goes forward this way. This is the leading edge. Bottom is the trailing edge. If it's on the back side, then the bottom is the leading edge and the top is the trailing side. It's always in the direction of rotation. So, now we've got the uh, brakes out. Remove the hardware clutch. Get them out of there. I admire all the rust down inside. I'll saturate this one with some brake cleaner. Eric would be proud. Oh, gross. Welcome to New England. Now, pins. Work them in and out a couple of times. Separate them from the top. Note, in this case, we don't have any rust all the way around it, which is good. This one here does not have the uh, little rubber slide on it, so we're going to clean this side out first. Fill that right up with brake cleaner, let it sit for a minute or so. brush to clean it up with. Now if you haven't seen this in one of my last videos, it's just a gun cleaning brush. I just cut it off so I can put it in a drill dip if I need to. And we'll just go down inside the hole, just put it down in there and just scrub it around in there. This one's not all rusty so I don't have to worry about using the drill. I can just kind of clean it up with this. Looks like 
that. Get it all cleaned out. And same thing on the other side. Before I do this, I'm going to actually just change my order of operation a little bit here. So to make it a little bit easier, I'll come back and rinse this out, clean it up afterward. We're going to concentrate right now on getting these out of here. Best, best file I've ever used on a caliper. A caliper bracket. It fits right in here and it's hard. And it allows you literally to scrape all of that rust right out of there. Get the front edge. Make sure you're doing it flat. It's bottom edge. It's back edge. All you're doing is just trying to clean that up a little bit. Get the high spots out of it. Fancy. Same thing on the other side. As Chris Fix always says, don't forget to put your safety goggles on. And yes, these things are ridiculous, but they work. They protect your eyes. That's what's important. And yeah, I didn't put them on right away. Bad, bad. Nice and shiny in there. That looks pretty good. Right, we'll go back to cleaning these out. I can take these back off again. Now we've got that board cleaned out. Let's rinse it again just to play it safe. Grab this pin, this pin cleaned up. Nice and clean, no rust. All right, now that all the traffic's gone by, problem with drawing, working out in the main road like this. Now you take the caliper pin, put a little bit of grease on it. Don't need a whole lot. You don't want to hydro lock the thing in there. But put a little, you know, get a little bit started in the boot. Now just work it around a little bit, get everything coated with it, and then twist it back and forth and work it down in there. See how there's wrinkling, you're getting a good vacuum, that's what I always like to see. Everything moves nice and easy, let's get to the other one. This one here does not have the rubber pin on it, uh, being that this was on the passenger side. Now we're going to fill this one up and let it soak for a minute or two. Clean this one off. Yeah, we got the four hardware clips. I'm gonna take note if there's any differences between any of them. Sometimes one side's thicker than the other. Uh, there could be almost any kind of a difference, but if there is, you need to make sure. As far as I can see, all four of these are exactly the same. They have numbers stamped on them. They are all stamped with the same number. So we need two for this side, two for the other side. Let's get these in the bracket. Yep, here comes the 10 man paint. This is just Permatex silver. The idea is, is you're just going to paint these surfaces They're scraped and cleaned. Very light coating. You 
uh, get all the surfaces that you just cleaned up. Basically all the surfaces that this metal hardware comes in contact with. You don't want these surfaces to get rusty, which is why we're doing this. This isn't for lubrication, this is to prevent rust. Don't want so much on here that you're going to end up squishing it into your rotor when you put the hardware on. So once you've got all your surfaces plastered with this stuff, I'm just kidding. Make your hardware clips, set them down in. You should sit right down flat. Shouldn't go springing back up on you. Same thing on the other side. These are basically to give your brake shoes or your brake pads a surface, nice smooth surface to ride on where they won't wear through or wear out your bracket. It's just a replaceable part. And then your brand new brake pads go against this, so we're gonna put this back on the other side. And here with brand new brake pads. Four of these are the same. One clip. The backing plate fell off. Snap that back into place. Two for this side, two for the other side. Take the roller off. Yuck. That's just gross. And go grab the new one. And just spray it down. Grab some clean towels. And spray it right on the towel so that you don't have to be wasteful. Get it good and, good and soaked. Go ahead and wipe down the rotor real good. Clean up the front and the back. Actually, let me do one more thing. Seeing as this car is a little bit older, let's get this cleaned up. No, I won't make any goat noises. Just a little bit on here. That way there, the new rotor doesn't stick to it. And go ahead and clean all the crap off of this. Hold the rotor in place if you want. Now we can go ahead and bolt the new bracket in place. Yeah. Tiny little dab, a blue thread locker, one drop. One drop. And cap back on immediately. Bracket in place. First bolt in. Second bolt in. Thread your bolts all the way down in. Extension for that. Your 
do want somebody to be able to get them back out, so don't over tighten them. And now that we've got the bracket in place, nice new brake shoes that I just got yuck all over the back of. And we'll clean those off, set those in, rotate them right into place, make sure that they move. It's easy when you put them in there. Yeah. Some resistance, get a little bit of drag from the caliper, springs, the anti-chatter, but they should still be able to move really relatively easily. Same thing with this one. Get them in at a little bit of an angle, lock them in, and rotate them. Make sure they move nice and easy. As long as they do, you're all set. Bring the caliper back down. Get your spring hook back out. Don't forget your hook. Make sure your hose is straight. Put it over your brake pad, set it into place. Get it over the ears. Make sure that your ears are lined up so that they fit properly. You have to work them around. Sometimes they sit at weird angles. Then we're going to put just a drop on these bolts as well. This is blue thread locker, so it comes out relatively easily. One drop, that's all we want, just one drop. Same thing with this one, just one drop. Get back on. Hopefully it doesn't get clogged up again on me. And we'll go ahead and put the caliper bolts in. Those are 14 millimeter. See, these are probably in the 30 to 40 pound range. These, you don't need to do a double wrench method to tighten them, just basically as tight as you can get them with just the hand wrench. You know, if you want to hit it a couple of times, make it a little snugger, you can do that too. But don't hit it hard enough to injure your hand. Go back, double check your caliper. Crack your bolts. tight. Go ahead and straighten the wheel out. Take the lug nut back off and then go ahead and put the wheel back on. This side's done. As soon as the owner's back with the caliper for the other one, we'll be getting over there back on the other side. Got the new caliper and bracket. Go ahead and grab the new rotor. The ones that they used to have. Yeah. This one's got the coating all over it. Soap and water for that too, right? Yeah, if you like it to flash rust. Now, before I go putting this on. Fluid film. It's an anti-rust, anti-corrosion fluid. Well, the last guy never used it. Does that stuff really work? For what it's supposed to do, it does. What it's supposed to do is make it so that this ro this rotor doesn't get rusted onto that hub. Put that on right over it. Spin a lug nut on, but I don't. I don't even know where I put the lug nuts. 
but brand new brackets they never grease these things well so pull the boot down yeah there's a little grease on the end of this but there's no grease on the shaft at all now keep in mind that even with a brand new caliper bracket they never put enough grease on these things as you can see there's some little glob on the end but there's nothing on the shaft at all really that will not last any length of time and they use the silicone paste so that's what we're going to be using get it on there get some in the hole work it around get the inside of the, the boot covered and ro twist it down in make sure that you're getting grease on everything same thing on the other side Again, nothing on the on the, the pin. We want to make sure we've got grease on the pin. And roll them down back and forth. And a little bit up around the top won't cause any problems. We want all of this grease down inside. Go ahead and put your caliper bracket. Uh, not used to doing it with new ones. So we're going to have to paint this one too. And we're going to coat where the hardware clips sit in the bracket. Even though it's brand new, it doesn't have any rust, we don't want it to have rust. So we're just going to put a little coating on everything here. Everything that the hardware comes in contact with. And then we'll go ahead and put the hardware clips in place. And I'll go ahead and install the caliper bracket. It'll sit right in here. I need the bolts. There's one of them. There's the other one. Where's my blue thread locker? I put it down somewhere and lost it. And again, another little, whoops. One dab, two dabs. Too much on that one. Now I'll go ahead and put the bracket back in. Send it back it out of the driveway. And I forgot to tell him to pump the brakes. So he went flying out of the driveway at 20 miles an hour backwards. I forgot to pump the brakes. And still, well, he didn't realize it. And I forgot to tell him. And he, and he backed at 20 miles an hour into a telephone pole. Crushed the whole back of the uh, trunk. Caliper. I'm going to leave these in until we get it mounted. One drop on each. Those are the screws 
screws that hold the cowl? Yeah. They're pretty small. Now I gotta get that little yellow plug out of the back of this thing. <sighs> Throw that in the parts bin. Might need it. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the hose hooked back up. I gotta bleed those brakes, right? Yep. Now that hose was also 14 millimeter. The torque on these is only about 18 to 20 foot pounds. It's a hollow bolt, it will break if you over torque it. And we got the little boot on the bleeder. Get the boot off of the bleeder. Set that right where we won't lose it. Uh, eight millimeter socket. I don't have an eight millimeter wrench. Actually, I do, but my eight millimeter wrench is buried. The only thing I don't like about this bleed screw that's a really long bleed screw. Over half of that sticks out. It doesn't need to be anywhere near that long. I'll go ahead and release the clamp on the line. And pump the brake pedal a few times. Get that to move. That's squirting. Yep, I saw that. Another reason for pet, pet trainers, but that means that we've got brake fluid in there. Now, here's the neat trick. I don't need a bleeder. You don't? No. Because it's gravity bleeding. I pump, the, I pump the brake pedal. That makes sure there's no air left Correct. in this line. Push it all the way down through. We'll be filling up the caliper already because it's coming out the bleed screw. So if I open up the bleed screw, it's dripping. It's self-bleeding. Self-bleeding. Now, the whole purpose of having somebody to help assist you is because of little air bubbles that get right. stuck in they here. They get stuck in there, and then you keep slowly tightening it as the air pushes out until it's all fluid. That's my brake bleeder. If there are any air bubbles in there, I'm dislodging them. Any. They're dislodged, they're coming up to the top. Let it drip a few more times. And go ahead and tighten up that bleach screw. Real light. Well, if the brakes are spongy, there's still more air in there. Exactly. But, we don't need to do the bleeding because of the way that was set up. Because I pitched the line right here, so no air can get up into the system. I didn't disconnect this until after it was bolted in, so that immediately flow starts down through. And then by pushing the brake pedal down, I filled the caliper up, pushed the air out, tapping it, dislodging the bubbles, let the rest out, gravity bleed. And it drips fast enough that a gravity bleed will work really well. So, go ahead and clean this mess up, put the wheel back on.
I think I'm going to get a sunburn here today. Great job. Probably had a little bit of brake fluid. If you guys liked that one, felt that one would be helpful, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and check out my other video for that free giveaway on the tool. We'll catch you on the next video. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. On these bolts as well, this is blue thread locker so it comes out relatively easily. I think we're plugged. We are plugged, nothing's coming out. Are you recording all of that?